Thanks, Kobe, and uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here at uh, Tel Aviv University to attend the first uh, new, uh, workshop between Tel Aviv University and uh, Northwestern University. Uh, I'm, an I'm an assistant professor in the electrical engineering and computer science department at Northwestern University, and we work on nanophotonic materials and devices. And today, I'll just talk about two topics that combine two different types of materials. One is a phase transition material, a vanadium dioxide, and the other one is a recently merging material that's a 2D layered uh, semiconductor, uh, and we're combining them with uh, plasmonic nanostructures to enhance the functionalities and make uh, functional hybrid nanophotonic materials and devices. Um, so this is the outline of my talk. Uh, first, I'll describe, describe uh, resonant absorbers uh, based on nanostructures and uh, discuss how one can achieve a tunable resonant absorption using a phase transition of vanadium dioxide. Uh, and in the second part of my talk, I'll briefly describe uh, a hybrid plasmonic 2D layered semiconductor material where uh, we show that one can actually enhance photoluminescence uh, in an atomically thin uh, material, optoelectronic material, uh, using surface plasma and polaridons uh, based on the silver nanodisc rays. So uh, one of the hot topics uh, in the nanophotonics and plasmonics is to actually engineer the absorption spectra of materials. And actually, uh, there has been a lot of interest uh, ranging from you know, microwave to optical frequencies in designing resonance structures that actually absorb electromagnetic radiation or light. Uh, so there's this work uh, by Hutley et al. dating back to 1976, where they were using metallic gratings. Uh, and recently, metamaterials and plasmonics uh, played an important role in designing spectrally selective absorbers and thermal emitters that can be used in uh, various applications. So s essentially, absorption is a loss mechanism in metals. Uh, uh, if you talk with plasmonics community, the ones that they want to use this for optoelectronics applications, that's not desired. But for certain applications, actually, that absorption in metals uh, could play an essential role. So I, I just listed you know, four different applications, but there are many more that are emerging uh, that are actually using the absorption uh, that's taking place in metals. So one is a hot carrier collection device where you actually generate carriers in metals uh, and using a metal semiconductor interface, you could be able to collect those hot electrons or hot holes depending on your structure and make detectors out of it. Essentially, uh, this, with this type of structures, you can design detectors uh, at any wavelength that you uh, want. You can actually design spectral thermal emitters. Uh, as we will discuss, the absorptivity is equal to emissivity of a material uh, due to Kirchhoff's law. And if you design the absorption spectra, you actually also engineer the emission spectra. And there, there are also applications in biosense and in photothermal therapy. So all these applications are actually benefiting from the absorption that's taking place inside the metal, which is often uh, seen as a uh, you know, a negative uh, uh, thing for plasmonics. And for, there are several challenges for designing uh, plasmonic uh, absorbers. Uh, the conventional plasmonic perfect or super, the perfect means that the absorption intensity is, is 100% uh, so that you have uh, the maximum absorption at a particular resonant wavelength. But typically the bandwidth uh, of these resonances are on the order of 50 to 100 nanometers at optical frequencies. Uh, and the current designs utilize sort of a three layer uh, metal, insulator metal, where the backfill metal is optically thick so that there's no light transmission. Light comes in and sort of uh, trapped between top nanostructured layer and there is a dielectric spacer which acts as a coupling layer between the top metallic layer and the bottom metallic reflector. So you can actually control the resonant frequency by playing with the thickness of your outside layer. Uh, so what we have shown in a recent work is that uh, we try to achieve a very narrow band resonant absorption. So when I mean very narrow band, we are interested in reducing this full with half maximum as much as we can, and then have the absorption intensity as high as we can 
So you can have a very sharp absorption peak at a particular resonant wavelength. So the problems with these current designs is that they have this oxide layer, which actually acts as a, a waveguide uh, between uh, you know, uh, sil two silver layers. So that actually, uh, also you can scatter light forward uh, into the dielectric, so there is a forward scattering mechanism. So what we've proposed is an all metallic, so we got rid of that dielectric layer, uh, and therefore we reduce that coupling to the waveguide mode. So these are just the false colored SEM images that show our current designs. So what we do in our group is also we uh, perform electromagnetic simulations to actually uh, look at the for a particular property in this case, we're calculating the absorption as a function of wavelength and period where we have a metallic stripe of 100 nanometer white and the, the metal thickness is 40 nanometers. So you can think this as we have an optical thick gold film and on top of it we have a 40 nanometer thick uh, gold gratings that are based on these metallic stripes. And then we can actually by controlling the periodicity, you couple into the surface lattice resonances. So this is different than uh, localized plasma resonance, and this is different than uh, propagating uh, SPP, surface plasma on polaridons. This basically has to do with the periodicity of your uh, nanostructure arrays. So as you can see, once you increase the periodicity, you see sort of a linear increase in terms of the resonance wavelength. And, uh, you can also see that the absorption intensity kind of gets reduced. However, you can actually make the resonant absorption narrower. So this is sort of a 2D map just showing the relationship between the wavelength and the periodicity. So we actually fabricated these structures using electron beam lithography in our uh, <coughs> excuse me, shared facilities um, at Northwestern University. And by using our uh, uh, inverted microscope, uh, we were able to measure the reflection. Uh, so in this case, what we measure is actually the reflection from the surface, and since there is no transmission, that would uh, relate, so one minus reflection would back basically give us these absorption spectra. So in terms of uh, you know, finding the resonant peak uh, position, we did well, but the intensity is not uh, as high enough um, in these type of designs. And essentially, this design also has a polarization-dependent behavior, so we excite the uh, gratings with the electric field perpendicular to the, uh, re these nanowire stripes. So we sort of looked into other possibilities uh, and we came out with the idea of using a nano disk instead of a nano stripe. And actually uh, this shows where you can actually uh, see a similar increase in terms of the wavelength, resonant wavelength, and the periodicity. But the, the thing that, that you would have to watch here is that when you go to smaller periodicities, so in this case, the diameter of these nanodisks is 400 nanometer, so they start to couple strongly each other. So you see the, this strong coupling between them, which kind of results in a shift. So you don't see this full linear behavior at shorter periodicities, and that's due to the, due to the coupling between uh, two neighboring nanodisk arrays. And you can actually look at the peak absorption intensity. This is simulation, by the way, as well as the uh, forward health maximum. So what this suggests is that if you increase the periodicity, basically you reduce the coupling between two neighboring uh, nano risk, you can significantly reduce the uh, forward health maximum, the resonant bandwidth, uh, by reducing that coupling. So in this case, you would like to reduce the losses uh, as much as you can, so uh, obviously this coupling is uh, an additional loss mechanism, uh, so you can get rid of that by in actually increasing the periodicity. And here we have the best results so far uh, in terms of the experiments. <coughs> so we were able to measure 11 nanometer bandwidth uh, resonant absorption with the absorption peak intensity about 90% at visible frequencies. Uh, or, you know, close to visible frequencies is around 750 nanometers. So, uh, and actually this also works as a polarization independent uh, absorber. So the absorption is taking place inside the metal uh, and due to these uh, interaction between the nanodisc arrays. 
You can also look at the uh, spe spatial absorbed power uh, where the absorption is taking place. Uh, and you can actually see that it's all in the metal because we don't have any other material here. And you can also look at different modes. But I'm not going to discuss these modes in detail. So one of the challenges, again, in uh, designing absorbers is that once you fabricate these uh, structures, they are basically passive. And you don't have any control over the absorption intensity. Uh, so it would be nice if you can actually design an absorber or emitter that, you, that can change its response uh, by some sort of an external stimulus. And for that purpose, we came up with the idea of using a phase transition material, which is a vanadium dioxide. <coughs> it's a phase transition material that changed its phase from semiconductor to metal, so from monoclinic phase to a rutile phase, uh, above the transition temperature of 68 degrees Celsius. And it can actually deduce this uh, transition uh, at ultra-fast uh, timescales. Uh, and this could be achieved by optical, electrical, or thermal switching. And what is interesting is that basically not only its electrical properties are changing, but they also the optical properties are changing. So these are uh, measured ellipsometry uh, results for complex refractive indices in the semiconductor and metallic phases. So in the metallic phase, you have a, uh, a negative epsilon, which is a, behavior, a plasmonic behavior, but has a high epsilon 2, high imaginary component of the dielectric permittivity, uh, indicating that it's actually uh, very lossy. But in, in the semiconductic phase, you have a finite and small amount of absorption. Uh, you also have, again, a finite um, uh, around 10 uh, epsilon 1. So it's basically behaving like a semiconductor. So what we've done is basically uh, combine the neural band observer design, we have this gold sort of a grading, uh, but then combine it with this active material VO2. And in the simulations, we use a, um, the sapphire layer because the VO2 is actually grown in sapphire, so we have to take that into account. And so far, we don't have any uh, material that you can actually grow VO2 on metal. So for that reason, we first take the sapphire and VO2 and HVO2 and then coat gold on top of it. But this is sort of the electromagnetic uh, simulation design where you have these two regions. You, you have a VO2 active region about 100 nanometer width uh, and then you have gold elsewhere. And once you take this, uh, once you look at these uh, you know, complex refractive indices, you can actually use them in electromagnetic simulations and get the response. So since we have sort of a, uh, a nano uh, grading on the, you know, we have a sort of these nano wires or nano uh, uh, slits, uh, so you have a polarization dependent behavior. So here you see two colors. Uh, so the, the, these two colors, the, the blue one is actually the insulator phase, uh, and the red one is the metal phase. So in the insulator phase, you see that you know, high absorption at these two different resonant wavelengths. This is a ne very narrow one corresponding to the surface lattice resonances, and this is the actual grading mode. And once you heat this up or the metal transition occurs, then uh, you see an intensity tunable absorption uh, that's taking place. So you can actually reduce the absorption drastically at this particular resonant wavelength. For, for the other polarization, you don't see that type of a behavior. So what we do is basically, with these ideas in mind, we fabricated the uh, structures using uh, electron beam lithography. So we have, <coughs> we have VO2 that's grown on sapphire, and we first etch VO2. So you can see this VO2 stripes here, and then coat gold on top of VO2. So, and you actually, you see the topography. So, so since you're coating the gold on top of the VO2, you would have this sort of a topography on, on top of the, so this is, just following the VO2 regions. Uh, again, this is not the side that we will come with the light. So this is all metal. So we're approaching from the other side. So this is top view, and this SCM image is from the, the bottom side. So we have to come through this. Again, it's just basically due to the fact that we don't have uh, the ability to grow VO2 on top of a metal. It will be nice if you don't, if you just have an air interface rather than a sapphire interface because it's already reflective. 
So, and these are the measurement results. So for two different polarizations, as you can see, we can actually see a similar response in the uh, measurements. Uh, so when it's in the, in VO2 is in the insulating phase, we have about 90% absorption. And once you heat this up, so it's above the transition temperature, you see a drastic reduction in the absorption intensity. And for other polarization, you see, you don't see any resonance, which makes sense. So it's basically, you cannot excite these grading modes with, with that particular configuration. We also looked into a polarization independent response. Uh, rather than looking at the nano uh, stripe uh, gratings, we looked at these nano gold nano disk arrays that are embedded in VO2. And the same thing, so we first etch VO2 and then call it gold on top of the, the VO2. Um, and here we also have a tunable response that is now independent of the polarization. So this is the simulation and that's the experiment. Uh, so in this case, we have more VO2 than uh, the previous case. So you can actually, you know, engineer this um, and to maximize the uh, on and off ratio. So these are not the perfect results, but uh, I think there's a lot of room for thinking about materials that can actually change their absorption spectra by applying certain, uh, you know, external stimulus. In this case, we're just heating up the sample, but it's actually possible to use an ultra-fast laser Actually, uh, Rick Schaller uh, uh, is also working on these. Uh, we gave these samples to him, so uh, there is a collaboration that we are interested in uh, looking at the uh, phase transition in these types of materials using ultra-fast uh, laser pulses. And this is just 3D absorption, uh, spectra, the absorption map, uh, just to show where is the absorption taking place. Uh, so when you have an insulating phase uh, VO2, so in this case, it's basically the VO2 is in between, and uh, the, the rest region is just gold. So the absorption is taking place in uh, the uh, VO2. So let me remind you that at these wavelengths, the gold behaves as a perf almost like a perfect electric conductor. So the light does not really penetrate through it. Uh, it's not like a perfect uh, plasmonic structure at those wavelengths, but the absorption is the highest at the VO2 region at the insulating phase. So when it becomes the metal, the VO2 becomes the metal, then what happens is basically you have an all metal reflective surface. So the VO2 metal has a little bit of absorption as well. So it's not like perfect gold mirror. So, but it basically, the absorption is reduced because now the, the surface is just becomes reflective. And you can also have a simil similar behavior for the, uh, the nano disk arrays. And uh, as I mentioned, you can also look at the thermal emission. So this is just an exper a simulation where we <coughs> actually simulated the IR radiance for uh, a two different structures. So essentially, if you have uh, a, you know, a thermometer, if you heat a sample up to 11, uh, uh, you know, 1100 uh, Kelvin, you basically have the black body absorption peak around 2.6 micron. And if you multiply that with the emissivity, which in turn is equal to absorptivity, you can actually engineer the IR radiation. So now you make it narrower by making a, uh, a resonance structure. So what is interesting here is that once you actually heat this up, so once you actually, let me mention that you know, these materials, the gold and VO2, they're not compatible with this temperature, but let's assume that we have uh, a certain materials that can actually have this response. So once you heat this up, you basically suppress the radiation. So you, th there's no thermal emission from these materials. Uh, so you can basically just uh, you know, get rid of a thermal emission uh, by heating up the sample. So uh, ideally, if you heat this up the sample, uh, you would expect the black body radiation to increase, but in this case, you can actually reduce it. So that's sort of a, a different thinking in terms of designing uh, thermal emitters as well. So we don't have any experimental results for this, but uh, this should actually work. Uh, so we have, just, just in two slides, I would talk about a different study. So in this case, we have continuous VO2 and gold, so there's no nanostructures. Uh, and what we looked into is a look at the reflection as a function of temperature. So 
we control the temperature, uh, we increase the temperature you know, from room temperature to uh, very hot temperatures. At room temperature, you have this sort of a reflection behavior. Uh, it's, it's like a, you know, uh, a fabric pair cavity, so you have this sort of modes here. If you increase the temperature, so around the transition temperature, what you see is you see a significant reduction in reflection. So what happens is that the metals actually become a hybrid mode where you have a metal ions inside insulating VO2 phases. So these phase transition occurs by uh, domains, and these domains, uh, the metallic VO2 becomes an island, and once you increase the temperature, you basically actually increase the size of the metallic island. So what happens is that it effectively behaves as a metamaterial, an effective medium where you can actually have a change in the reflection. So what it becomes is a perfect, almost perfect absorber. So this is just thin film. There is no nanostructures. Uh, you can have a sort of a broader uh, resonant absorption. Uh, this is due to the uh, metamaterial behavior. So you can also look at the decreasing temperature. So in this case, you start from hot temperature and look at the decreasing temperature. So as, as we all know, or you know, for, for people working with NEO2 know, that there is a hysteresis behavior in reflection. So once you're actually increasing the temperature uh, around the phase uh, transition temperature around 70 degrees, so you see this sort of the minimum reflection, which means that actually becomes a perfect absorber. Uh, so you can see that this effect is uh, occurring near the transition temperatures. So at room temperature, at very hot temperatures, you basically have similar reflection behavior. So this is just a different way of looking at what, how the phase transition affects this uh, kind of behaviors in uh, um, phase transition and gold structures. So let me switch to the second part of my talk, where I'll be discussing uh, a different type of a material. And in this case, the functionality is basically coming from the fact that we're using a semiconducting material and looking at its emission properties. And we're, we're, we're going to look at the plasmonic nanodisc arrays on 2D layered semiconducting materials. And these 2D materials is a very hot and recent, recent emerging area. A lot of interesting electrical, optical, mechanical, thermal properties, you know, especially with graphene. And after graphene, there's a lot of interest in monitor sulfide, you know, uh, uh, boron nitride and, and a lot of interesting materials are actually emerging. But one of the significant challenges when you're looking from the optics and photonic side with these materials is that they actually have very thin uh, materials. So let's say if you take an atomically thin uh, or monolayer semiconducting layer, if you look at its emission and absorption, it's really not uh, high enough to be used for a particular application, say photovoltaics, photodetectors, light emitting diodes, and so on and so forth. And if you, again, look at the literature, there are a lot of proposals saying that, okay, these materials can be used for, you know, photovoltaics, photodetectors, and because they are jack band gap semiconductors, and so on and so forth. But really, one has to actually engineer and increase the light matter interactions in these materials. So what we've done is basically combine these materials with uh, plasmonic structures to actually enhance uh, certain processes in this particular work we're looking at uh, enhanced photoluminescence and the idea is to just uh, you know couple these surface plasmon uh, polaritone modes using the silver disc arrays and by increasing the electric field intensity right at the monodisulfide layer which is atomically thin so by the way this is just exaggeration of the structure so this should be you know atomically thin and then this is about 40 nanometers but just to give you an idea about uh, how this works. So we're use, utilizing these plasmonic nanodisc arrays just to investigate light metal interactions in these hybrid plasmon uh, semiconducting material system. So our collaborators at Arizona State University uh, uh, actually uh, gave us a large area CVD grown monodisulfide samples. Uh, there's a lot of you know work towards growing these type of materials and in particular the large area Monolayer sulfide monolayers enabled us to s perform the study that I'll be describing today. So what is interesting is that actually a monolayer, mono so this is a PL, uh, the monolayer monolayer sulfide is a direct band gap semiconductor, whereas the bulk monolayer sulfide is an indirect band gap semiconductor. So this is uh, 
and this has a peak uh, PL intensity around six AV nanometers. Uh, so what we can do is first just uh, look at the uh, FDD, using the FDD technique to calculate uh, the electric field intensity that one can achieve right beneath the silver nanodisc array. So what we are doing is actually just looking at a one nanometer uh, you know, height area at this periodicity, just calculating the total electric field intensity integrated at this area. So this is looking at different diameters for a fixed periodicity. Um, and for particular diameter around you know, 150 nanometers or so, you see an actually very intense electric fields. Again, just let me remind you that this is the integrated over the entire area, not just in particular at these edges. So at the edges, you should expect more electric field intensity. And uh, so this sort of is a starting point to you know, uh, look at you know, how we can actually achieve this type of enhanced properties in more of the sulfide uh, monolayers. So we fabricated these nanodisc arrays using electron beam lithography on large area model the sulfide layers. And, and the idea is basically to design a surface plasma polariton resonator at the excitation wavelength. So we will be exciting these model the sulfide layers by using a uh, you know, green laser, 532 nanometers. And as you can see, we have a reflection deep here at around that resonant wavelength. So this is the calculation and the measurement uh, so this is for a 130 nanometer uh, diameter nanodisc arrays. So the idea is to engineer a resonant at that excitation wavelength. So <coughs> here we have different, so we have sort of six different arrays with changing diameter sizes. Uh, these are just SEM images. So this is about you know, 50 by 50 micron uh, arrays. And what we do is actually measure the photoluminescence intensity, so we have a 2D map by, you can basically scan the photoluminescence by, you know, um, fixing the laser and just moving the stage. So what we find out is that the highest intensity at the, at 6, 7, 3 nanometers, so this is the PL peak intensity, the maximum PL is occurring at this specific wavelength. Uh, so by using nanodisc arrays with uh, varying nanodisc diameters, we were able to shove the correlation between the size and the PL emission. So here, as you can see, the highest enhancement has been obtained by uh, 130 nanometer uh, diameters um, uh, nanodisc arrays. So these blue regions are actually corresponding to just uh, regions where you don't have any uh, nanostructures. So even with the uh, presence of these metals, you can still see a little bit of enhancement but that's not as high as one would have with these 130 nanometer uh, diameter nanodisc arrays. So you can actually just look at the PL intensity in, instead of just looking at these 2D maps, if you, you know, measure from particul particular area. So here we have the no disk. Uh, so this is just from these uh, empty areas. And as you can see, for all the diameters, you see an enhanced photoluminescence, but in particular, for 130 nanometer uh, diameter, so you see the maximum enhancement, about 12-fold PL enhancement has been observed. So you basically enhance the photoluminescence uh, by 12-fold by putting a plasma nanostructure. So this is a significant enhancement uh, for looking at particular applications. Uh, and here, we basically uh, just uh, look at the PL enhancement factor. So where we just look at the ratio between, for the experiment, we look at the ratio between the maximums of these two. Uh, we, so we divide the PL intensity uh, for uh, a particular nanostructure size to the notice structure. So you can, these, these dots are from the experiments, and these are from the simulations. So you can see that we, we have sort of a maximum enhancement around particular size where it actually coincides with the excitation uh, wavelength of the uh, structure, which is 532 nanometer. So this actually shows that by enhancing the electric fields locally at that resonant, uh, at the excitation wavelength, you can actually increase the PL intensity. So this slide actually is a different way of looking at things. Uh, so these, in this slide, which might be a little bit uh, complex, but just let me mention in a minute that 
Uh, so instead of the maximum peak intensity, we are just looking at the PL maps at different wavelengths. So let's say if you look at this, this is 680 nanometers where we have the high intensity. If you look at the PL intensity um, at the higher wavelength, you basically see that the maximum enhancement is obtained for a larger structure. And if you go to larger wavelengths, you see that it's sort of shifting to larger structures. So in this case, what we're looking at is basically just the enhancement that is taking place in here. So as you can see, for certain, uh, for certain structures, the enhancement is actually increased here. So that's basically due to the scattering effect. These larger structures scatter more efficiently to larger wavelengths. Uh, and there are two works that, are, that doesn't use any you know, other materials, but these are just appeared um, in nanoletters as well as in ACS photonics. So if you're interested in you know, discussing for collaborations and future ideas, so we have this work on uh, visible frequency meta surfaces for spectrum splitting, where we use a silver nanostripe arrays uh, that has trapezoid shape. So you can basically <coughs> come with the normal light, normal incident light, and actually uh, split the spectrum uh, to a certain particular direction by using this sort of arrays. And another uh, work, we, are, we introduced a larger area lithography free super absorbers and color filters. In this case, you don't have any nanostructures by controlling the fabric pillar resonances and ultra thin films. You can actually make perfect absorbers as well as color filters. So these are large area color filters. So in conclusion, I, I described two uh, works that relate to functional hybrid and nanophotonics uh, using a VOT, VO2 nano uh, structures where you can actually tune the resonant absorption and thermal emission uh, upon phase transition of VO2. And in the uh, second part of my talk, I described a plasmonic 2D layered uh, uh, monolayer semiconducting material where one can enhance the uh, photoluminescence in these structures. So with that, I would like to acknowledge my group in, uh, in particular, Northwestern NSF Merseg Center, uh, Air Force and ISEN for their support. And thank you for uh, your attention. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. In view of time.